forces have been asked to get to the starting gate for the loading process in the open earth. Number five, Fairway Lane, will be loaded in before the others. Rider off. Rest amount to move on in. Columbard and your odds on favorite, Colleen. We're at 81 degrees, feels like 85 on this closing Tuesday, final Tuesday of our meeting. Three more days remain, Friday night, Saturday night, and Labor Day Monday. Lee's luck and true 10. True 10 moving in. Flag is up, all set for a Tuesday. And they're off. All came out well enough for the opener. Colleen busted the gate and has a say early with Lee's Luck. Lee's Luck going to throw it down with Colleen. And Lee's Luck going to go right forward and get two lengths on Colleen, who will settle back in second. True 10 will be way off the pace in third. And then a virtual heater late on for Columbard on the inside of the late closing kick that will be fairway lane out the back. Ten lengths separates this group of five as they zip around the only turn. It's Lee's Luck and Rainier Arietta, still by a length and a half, over Colleen and Juan Molina. These two have certainly separated themselves by eight lengths over True Ten, still picking up third. Fairway Lane is fourth and moving wider and may have a board placement in chance and in store for that one. Columbard is now relegated and very wide off the track and saving all the ground late. True Ten is coming up as well. On that lead, Lee's Luck. There's Colleen. There's Lee's Luck. Here comes Fairway Lane and True 10. Fairway Lane might have them both. It's True 10 on the inside. Fairway Lane on the outer, but it's still Colleen. And Lee's Luck, Fairway Lane. Oh, man. Well, that got interesting real quick. It's either Colleen or Fairway Lane in a photo. I think Lee's Luck might get third. And then True 10's just going to be a half length back and fourth. Photo finishes all around. Judge has already hung number three, Colleen, as your winner of the opener. Odds on one to two. Five, Fairway Lane, second. At 13 to one, Lee's Luck. Just a noggin back in third, and then True 10 ran a very good fourth.
Well, here's to the remaining six races on the Tuesday proceedings being as safe and as close as the opener was. It was won by odds on gamble Colleen and jockey Juan Molina Jr. Owned by Charles Ritter, trained by Ralph Martinez, a six year old gilded son of More Than Ready. Out of the unbridled song mare, Habibu. Bred in Florida by Hardacre Farm LLC. The winning time, a minute 13 and one fifth of a second all five ran in race number one. In the second race, we go six furlongs as well. For retired firefighters, field of six, $3,200 fillies and mares, catches, as I said earlier, an older field of mares. Post time for that comes up at 131 Central in 21 minutes. Gate assistance looking at the five Foxy's beauty behind the stalls. Totally blocked by the tractor here. Could be a tack adjustment. Turn to the TV side and see that your view is a heck of a lot better. Foxy's Beauty moving in. Five right now, it's 10 to one. Moving in. Apprentice Roman Cruz about to climb back aboard in the purple jacket. A little bit tipsy and Lady Express will be the next two. A little bit tipsy, number one at Even Money. Miss Learjet. My wife is boss. Lady Warrior. Last of the mares in the gate. Lady Warrior moving up. Kelly Mulvaney, our starter, moving out. In the gate, flag is up. And they're off. A bit sluggish away from the gate, a little bit tipsy as expected, still has some space underneath on the inside fence. Lady Warrior gets out to that lead. Miss Learjet and Elizabeth Thurman going to vie for early contention with a little bit tipsy. Three in a row. My wife is boss. Just the length off the front running trio in fourth. A bit squeezed. Foxy's Beauty is going to have to negotiate a trip and is swung out widest of all. And that leaves relegated last Lady Express and Javi Diego. Only four and a half or five separates this group of six. Around the turn, my wife is boss has come away with the lead by a half. Miss Learjet is gaining along the outside as Lady Warrior. Sticking to the inside fence, little bit tipsy with say. Here comes Foxy's beauty, widest of all, and still a handful for Javi Diego as last place Lady Express. Three sixteenths to go. 
My wife is boss and Javi Tavares out by a length from Miss Learjet and the oncoming little bit tipsy. Floundering on the outside, Foxy's Beauty and Lady Warrior have to get going. It's my wife is boss out by two, little bit tipsy. Gonna try late, but not good enough. My wife is boss beat little bit tipsy, Miss Learjet photo for fourth. Three, seven to two, my wife is boss. A little bit tipsy will complete the exacta at three to five. Photo to complete the superfecta, five and or six. Six, Lady Warrior fourth. Entering the winner's circle and being welcomed back to the winner's enclosure by retired firefighters. Number three, my wife is boss and jockey Javier Tavares. Owned by Nick Angelou, trained by our Frank Randazzo Jr. My wife is boss, is a five-year-old gray roan daughter of heroes and crooks out of Reina M. By with approval, bred in Illinois by Leo Rodriguez. The winning time, a minute 12 and four-fifths of a second. All six ran in race two. So far in the slick pick seven, one to two favorite, seven to two, second choice. Moving on, race number three, $10,000 allowance optional claiming race, Illinois breads, non-winners of two, going six furlongs for accounting career consultants, fifth annual derby run. Field of seven, two overweights, number two, Mona Me Fuzzy, three pounds over, and the seven, Mac Pan Dowdy, one pound over. Post time for the third race at 2.01.
behind the gate throughout to settle down after acting up upon entering the track Magnolia number four well behind the starting gate. Still have time for all wagers in the upcoming third. Horses are approaching the starting gate. You still have one minute for all wagers. Third race, Accounting Career Consultants, fifth annual Derby Run. Mac Pandowdy already in the outside stall for the upcoming third. Rambunctious Magna Lee into stall four. Last Fortino family, stall one. Monami Fuzzy will be in right next door at seven to one. Lonesome Dream. Lonesome Dream, then two back after that. Baba's Boy and a Merry Heart. Six is about to move in. They're in the gate. Flag is up. And they're off. A clean getaway for all seven. Last Fortino family had some of the break, but gave it up to a Merry Heart first time gelding passed by Magna Lee, who was acting up all throughout the post parade. Mac Pandowdy will be second, now third, the oncoming Baba's Boy to contest with Magna Lee up top. Back and forth is a Merry Heart receding a bit, Lonesome Dream picking up the bit as well. The last Fortino family is sixth of the seven and has one beaten, and that's Mona Me Fuzzy out the back by nine or ten. Off the speed that is Baba's boy and Carlos Uloa at five to two, a length from Magna Lee in second. Hustled upon a Merry Heart in third, still third. One to recommend from here on out. Lonesome Dream is gobbling up ground, but certainly has wide open spaces on the outside. It's Baba's boy and the split coming from a Merry Heart who's gaining with every stride as well. Rail to Magna Lee opens up for a piece, but it's a Merry Heart and Javier Tavares has dispensed with the field with the cheek pieces and is gone. A merry heart to roll and win at three to one. A double for Javier Tavares. Second was Lonesome Dream. Baba's Boy was third. And Monami Fuzzy closed late to grab part of the Superfecta.
In race number three, written for Accounting Career Consultants, their fifth annual derby run here at FanDuel Sportsbook and Horse Racing. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being out here today. The 50 cent pick four sequence kicks off with the upcoming fourth race. There are no changes to be seen nor had. So wager away. Three to one so far on the slick pick seven follow along. One to two, seven to two, now three to one. We're dealing with a total pool right around 29,000 plus with the addition of 8,800 today. Now official prices appearing for race number three, 860, interesting, $5 and $3 across on a merry heart. $2 exact to $34.20. As we welcome back to the accounting career consultants winner circle number six, a Mary Hart and Jockey Javier Tavares with a riding double, owned by Nelson Kolaski, trained by Frank Randazzo Jr., four year old son of a Mary Hart out of Rebus, set by Cherokee Rap, Illinois homebred win for winning odor. Nelson Kalaski. The winning time, a minute 12 and 2. Race number 4, we go 6 furlongs. $4,000, the claiming tag, Phillies and Mares, 3 years and up. Field of 6. At 2.29 and 21 minutes. Still have time. Just a little bit more than a minute. Philly and Mares approaching the gate. Still have time to finalize those fourth race wagers. Mora Valley behind the starting gate, really acting up now.
Mora Valley is in now. Arctic Music, six to one. Vegan goes best. Hold the spending. Hold the spending. The youngster in this. Still waiting on Vegan goes best. On the board at three to one. Hold the spending. Six to one. Alma Fuerte. Outside stall, Kalispell. Not quite in yet. Just about positioned. They look to be right. And Alma Fuerte, I think, acted up. I think that was the five. We'll see. Assistant seems ready. And they're off. Breaking well is Callis Spell and Alma Forte. Alma Forte backs off just a hair. Vegan goes best, goes up with Callis Spell in the complete firing line. Mad dash for the lead. Arctic Music now will sit second behind Mora Valley, who is a bit rank upon loading, now has a half length tenuous lead. Arctic Music second. Vegan goes best is up towards the front running Vanguard and also spread out is Kalispell, now up in the front running trio. Spit out is Arctic Music, not where that one wants to be. Alma Fuerte, jockey just grabs a change of the goggles here. And last is hold the spending, the filly with Yero Rodriguez is on the move. But it's all Kalispell and Juan Molina Jr. towards the quarter mile to go mark, out to nearly a length lead from a retreating Mora Valley back in second. Also coming up along the fence is Alma Forte, who's gaining a lot of ground. And on the crown of the course is Hold the Spending, who means business. But they all have to catch Kalispell. Bet down to six to five. And catching is Alma Forte, but running out of ground. Kalispell will oblige and roll to a win. Three lengths over Alma Forte second, Hold the Spending third. And Mora Valley completes the super. Moving into the winner's enclosure, winner of race number four at six to five, Kalispell and jockey Juan Molina Jr. with a riding double, owned by Ralph Martinez and Kyle McElravey. Ralph Martinez, a training double. Juan, 
a writing double. Callis Bell is a seven-year-old daughter of successful appeal out of Swan Peak by Broad Brush. Illinois bred by Hutch Holzapple and Dennis Peterson, the winning time a minute 12 and four. All six ran Don's No Man's Land in the winner's circle. Thanks, folks, for being out here today. Back-to-back, -back, two turn races for races five and six. In the fifth race, $10,000 allowance optional claimers. Field of seven to go the mile distance next. Post time for that is at three o'clock in 22 minutes. Six to five favoritism on the outside runner, Megan's honor. Andrew the Giant moving in, shall fire also. River Cactus, Antrim's Giant. Try, try again. Two back, go for Sherry, Megan's honor. Go for Sherry in. Megan's honor. Not quite in. Almost ready. in the gate and they're off a perfect start hustled away like a quarter horse early is try try again outside runners go forward go for sherry and megan's honor megan's honor gonna go and cross and clear at the seven furlong mark three lengths in front of go for sherry in second running in third head thrown about is try try again fourth well position and trims giant in a good spot a couple of lengths back to River Cactus, flanked on the outside by the wide-running Shellfire, and last by 15 lengths off the lead is Andrew the Giant, 
and it's a torrid pace set by Megan Zahner. Megan Zahner has been let loose by Victor Santiago to a five or six length margin from go for Sherry in second. No change in the running order. Try, try again. Now moves underneath now and is now all alone in third on the outside. Shellfire has lost all kinds of ground but is rolling right up along past Antrim's Giant who backs out just a tad with River Cactus and Andrew the Giant out the back. Given a breather has been Megan's honor. Now that five length lead has dwindled to just a length and three quarters. From go for Sherry in second, it's Shellfire. Asked for everything that he has, now out a third. And still moving well enough is try, try again. Backing out is Antrim's giant, widest of all, and is all done. They all have to catch Megan's honor. Past the 3 16th, still out by five. Go for Sherry has been second throughout. Back into it is Shellfire late on the scene as River Cactus for a piece, but they couldn't catch Megan's honor and Victor Santiago, who will win very easily by almost five. Go for Sherry for the play spot, then Shellfire, and a retreating River Cactus was fourth. Stepping into the winner's enclosure, winner of today's fifth race, number seven, Megan's Honor and jockey, jockey Victor Santiago. It's an owning double for Charles Ritter. Scott Becker is the winning trainer. Megan's Honor is a four-year-old chestnut gelded son of Gallup out of Honor Graham by Graham Hall. Bred here in Illinois by William Stewart. The winning time, 139 and one-fifth of a second. Off odds, one to two. Number six, you run her up. In this past race, Go for Sherry was claimed for $10,000. New owner, Merritt Hudson. New trainer, Steve Manley. Go for Sherry, number six, was claimed for 10000 Sixth race to go with mile 70 yard distance with no program changes. Race number five, still not yet official. Race number five has now been made official. Sixth race to go to the gate at 3.30 Central in 22 minutes.
As the field nears the starting gate, you still have just about a minute left for all wagers in the sixth. Final wagers, they've reached the gate. American success already in stall four. Wide open betting board, final wagers, Joey Bean loads up. Just enough tough. Penalty shot. See if Dovka's going to move up before talkative Jack. In strolls Dovka. Jack to the outside. A mile 70. All set for the late double. American success. Rider not quite tight on yet. And they're off. Just enough tough. Joey B. Joey B relinquishes and will sit back last. The speed duel is on. Penalty shot. Gives it up to Dovka, who will go forward from American success second. Outside running is penalty shot. Rail skimming just enough tough to show the way from fifth to second sneaking along the inside fence. Sitting back there in fifth is penalty shot and content to trail not by much today is talkative Jack, but the speed is on underneath Davka and Rainier Arietta Tries to win it and win it around turn number one. Out to a three and a half, four length lead over just enough tough and Javi Diego. And then a chasm back to third place running American success. Patiently so, talkative Jack trailing that one. Joey B is running back in fifth and now last is penalty shot, not showing any kind of speed at all today, trailing by about 17 lengths. The speed duel is on between Davka and Just Enough Tough. They are throwing it down, not going too fast, but they're going head and head. By the 3 8 mile mark they go. And it's Just Enough Tough over Davka, who's way back in second now, trying to gain momentum around the turn. Moving on up ever so slightly is Joey B up into third. Joey B is going to be a danger to the front-running gas halls, who's out to the front. Just enough tough. Out by four. Going to have to deal with the oncoming speed that is Joey B. Davka backs completely out. Nothing from talkative Jack or American success. It's all just enough tough. Just enough tough. Straightens out wonderfully, two to one. Looks like a gift, just enough tough, much the best. Gonna win by five, five and a half. Joey B second, American success third, and then talkative Jack was fourth.
Entering the winner's circle, making a wreck of that race. Race number six goes handily to number two, Just Enough Tough and Jockey Javier Diego. Running for Diego Racing Stable LLC, Lauren Diego, Frank Randazzo Jr., the winning conditioner. Just Enough Tough is a six-year-old gelded son. Just Enough Humor out of the marquetry mare, Mark the Moment, bred in Kentucky by Lyda Williamson. Winning time a minute, 44 and four-fifths of a second over a mile 70 yards. Two to one second choice, six dollars, three eighty, two forty across. Seventh and last race this Tuesday. No changes, field of seven as we sprint six furlongs. $10,000 allowance optional claimers, non-winners of two races other than or non-winners of four life. Six furlongs the distance with the field of seven coming up at four o'clock. Horses have been summoned to the starting gate. You still have one minute. Voting in for the seventh and final, last race to end Tuesdays for 2021 at FanDuel Sportsbook and Horse Racing. Hidden promises in Alex's strike. On the board, eight to five. Second choice as of now is the two. Taps big shot. Three and four bring down the slick pick seven. Three or four. WW Candy. Outside stall. Victor Balin. Nine to one. Kelly Mulvaney. Flag is up. They're in the gate. And they're off. Brilliant beginning. Tetsu to flash some early pace, but there goes WW Scouts on her and Victor Santiago to get loose on the lead from Taps Big Shot and Javi Tavares in second. It's Chicks for Free running third outside WW Candy in fourth, followed by Tetsu who backs off fifth. Inside Hidden Promise, six lengths to make up in sixth and out the back is Alex's strike much farther back than usual. On that speed, it's WW Scouts Honor. Odds on in the end at three to five. Pressured every step of the way now from Taps Big Shot, who's now giving it his all and is out by about a head. Fighting back, WW Scouts Honor. Chicks for free is third. Outside fourth, WW Candy. And sneaking along that inside fence, WW Scouts Honor rebreaks and puts a length on a weary taps big shot. But here comes WW Candy. Chicks for free is gone. Splitting as Tetsu got shut off there. But it's WW Candy and Victor Balin going to hammer him in the end at 9 to 1. Alex's strike came from dead last to get second, and then a photo for third, either Tetsu or Chicks for Free.
So we will have a pick seven carryover. The rundown went like this, one to two, seven to two, three to one, six to five, one to two, two to one, and nine to one. Healthy carryover, just shy of 30,000 for Friday night's first of seven at 7.30. Up and down the network, fire away on Friday night. Five Tetsu did get third away from the four chicks for free. Seven, two, five, four. Three wins on the Tuesday afternoon proceedings for winning owner Charles Ritter. Two wins for trainer Scott Becker. W.W. Candy in the winner's circle, winner of the seventh, as number seven at nine to one. Piloted home by Victor Balin. Charles Ritter owns Scott Becker Trains, four-year-old son of Twirling Candy out of Tinka's Song by Unbridled Songbird in Florida by Farm 3 Enterprises LLC. The winning time, one eleven and one-fifth of a second off seven ran. Nine to one over five to two over eight to one. Healthy trifecta coming back. Ten cent superfecta, one hundred thirteen dollars and sixty five cents. Fifty cent trifecta for the get out race, ninety five dollars seventy cents. Two dollar exact is seventy six twenty. Give you that pick seven carryover coming into Friday. as we thank you again for your attendance on track. $26,060 for the pick seven carryover on Friday night. You have a great rest of your Tuesday. We'll see you back here at 7.30 or right around seven o'clock for changes on Friday evening.